morning and welcome to Hazel Park United Church of Christ on this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. It is so good to worship with you on this day. The sun is shining on this day of recording. The election still hasn't been resolved and we continue to wait. We wait with grace and patience. A few announcements before we begin this morning. Poinsettias. Yeah, I'm talking about poinsettias. Really, Sarah, you're talking about poinsettias. It's 65 degrees outside. And yet, we're talking about poinsettias. So if you'd like to order a poinsettia in memory of someone or in honor of someone, please get those orders to Julie in the office as those orders are due on November 15th. What we will be using those poinsettias for are to adorn our sanctuary so that it looks lovely in this space as we head into Advent and Christmas. Also, after worship this morning, uh, there is our virtual annual meeting. So if you would like to attend that, look for the link in this daily connection, as well as various emails that have gone out about the annual meeting. There should be a packet of information that you can click on to get so you can follow along with all of the annual meeting agenda and other reports. If you have any questions about how to get on, uh, please send Reverend Sarah a quick text and she will try to navigate as best as she is able to, as best as I am able to. Um, Julie's laughing right now because that's just really quite funny, but we will try to get you on that Zoom call for our annual meeting. As we take this time then to gather in this, in this murky time, as we try to find our footing, as we try to wait graciously and, patient, and filled with patience, we are mindful of scriptures and how we turn to scriptures in this time to figure out, will they lend us an opportunity of comfort? Will they give us some wise counsel? And today's parable that we will read from the Gospel of Matthew is not a parable that would have normally been selected for a day such as today and yet it came up in the lectionary and it also is one we can lean into it is the parable of the ten bridesmaids where five of them are prepared their oil is filled waiting for the bridegroom to come where whereas five are foolish and not ready so how are we going to figure out how we can both be wise and foolish because we're never just either or. How do we bring them all into conversation together? How can we then be prepared as a church to move together in faith? So I trust you have what you need for this time of worship this morning. A cup of coffee, a cup of tea, your bulletin, and let's be in an attitude of prayer and worship at this time. And I'd like to share with you a poem written by Jan Richardson that is entitled, entitled Blessing for Waiting. And she writes, Who wait for the night to end, bless them. Who wait for the night to begin, bless them. Who wait in the hospital room, who wait in the cell, who wait in prayer, bless them. Who wait for news, who wait for the phone call, who wait for a word, who wait for a job, a house, a child, bless them. Who wait for one who will come home, who wait for one who will not come home, bless them. Who wait with fear, who wait with joy, who wait with peace, who wait with rage, who wait for the end and who wait for the beginning, who wait alone, who wait all together, bless them. Who wait without knowing what they wait or why, bless them. Who wait when they should not wait, who wait when they should be in motion, who wait when they need to rise, who wait when they need to set out, bless them. Who wait for the end of waiting, who wait for the fullness of time, who wait emptied 
and open and ready, who wait for you, oh bless them. And so we take this time in this waiting to be blessed as we pray together. Holy leader, we are presented once again with many choices. Today we have chosen to worship together in thanksgiving and praise. We have found the freedom and joy of being able to gather in peace. We have found the time and resources to be able to enjoy this precious opportunity. And we have followed the calling of our faith to come together in supplication, intercession, and gratitude. Be with us as we worship and help us to choose you over and over. Help us to recommit ourselves to the blessings and challenges of our devotion to you and your love. Be made, be made known to us and help us to feel you near as we wait together in prayer. Amen. We turn to our first hymn, and thanks to Beth for singing on this day. Be 
children ripped and torn, battered, bruised, and worn. Kiri they saw all who look hate in the face, locked in hate's embrace. Kiri they saw you've given up and can't see. There is enough love for us all. There is enough love for us all. And the great good news is that though we may sleep and fall short, God is always awake to our needs and provides overflowingly. Though we may wander into the wilderness of many temptations, God's journey is one of focused and complete compassion. We are loved and we are forgiven. God will always embrace us, whether we are ready for such grace or not. In this, let us be assured. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now turn to our scriptures, our scripture on this day, and we turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. And this Gospel reading is directed to the early community of faith and to believers of every age who struggle with the discontinuity between the realm of God transformational promise and lived reality. The realm of God preached and lived by Jesus raised expectations for both personal and social transformation. Yet when the Gospel of Matthew is written some 30 to 40 years after the disciples proclaimed the resurrection of Christ, it appears to most that little, if anything, has changed. The Roman Empire is still in charge. The poor continue to be exploited. Roman imperial military might has a firm grip on the populace. The message to Christians of every age is the transformative moment for realm of God change will come in its own time. Half-hearted or half-prepared will never do. If we 
fail to do the work, we will miss the opportunity when it arrives. Expect delays, but be ready. For those who prepare, their light will shine bright, and the door to God's realm will be open. Let's take a moment then to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us on this Sunday. And thanks to Reverend Sherry Prestman, Minnesota Conference Minister, for reading this gospel. The gospel reading today is from the 25th chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. I appreciate the authors Audrey West and Leighton Williams for writing commentaries in the Christian century on this passage of scripture and for whom I share many of their thoughts with you on this morning. Our world continues to display the picturesque scenes of uncertainty where we are left to slog through the moments of disbelief, despair, resilience, hope, impatience, and frustration. In this waiting season, a season that appears to have no end fitting for the season after Pentecost that goes on and on, we wonder how long we must continue on this roller coaster ride of peaks and valleys. We wonder if any kind of preparation is needed if the wait brings more of the same feelings and desires. In the midst of a season such as this comes a parable from Jesus that is rather confusing and ominous. Jesus offers a story of a belated wedding feast and the exclusion of the unprepared as a metaphor for our call to expectant waiting on God and the coming kingdom. An interesting parable to consider in this waiting season an even more interesting parable to consider when the time at the writing of this and recording of this sermon, there is still no final result to the presidential election. This parable seems so contrary to Jesus' teaching. Grace, mercy, fairness, inclusion, compassion are central tenets to most parables. The last are not first in this one. In her commentary about this text, Audrey West writes, quote, Jesus calls the bridesmaids foolish, or marai in Greek, which is the root of today's offensive epithet moron. When these foolish ones finally reappear after the feast has already begun, no one hearing the parable is surprised to learn that they have trouble getting through the door. It is easy to point fingers when faith in our own effort renders others unworthy. The foolish ones should have known better. On the flip side, the wise bride 
bridesmaids did their homework and had all of their provisions. When the foolish ones asked for oil, they responded by saying, get your own, which seems to imply that there is only so much oil, so much good to go around. Audrey West writes, quote, their lamps are lit, but their vision is limited. Their fear of losing closes off the so-called wise bridesmaids to the truth that by hoarding the oil, they diminish the event. Five lamps at full strength provide no more light than ten lamps at half strength. But five extra people at the party would almost surely result in a more substantial celebration. Leighton Williams talks about how the bridegroom then faces no consequences for leaving ten women alone in the, night, in the night far past his expected arrival time. Not to mention that after making everyone wait for so long, the bridegroom does not even wait long enough for the five oil-deprived bridesmaids to return. Nor do the five wise bridesmaids catch any flack for their lack of generosity toward the others. Williams continues, Are we meant to conclude then that our invitation to the kingdom of God hinges on hoarding supplies and prioritizing self-preservation over the collective good? Or that God will be careless with our time and how God shows up? I wonder if the first mistake is for us to worry about and critique everyone in this story except for those we are meant to identify with and learn from. After all, if we were all wise bridesmaids, what need would any of us have for such a parable? On the contrary, we are often foolish. So perhaps we do well to look there for a lesson to learn. These bridesmaids are patient and willing, despite being labeled foolish. What leads to their condemnation is that they do not store up for themselves the reserves they need to show up to serve as God calls them to when the time eventually comes. How are we focusing our time? our energy and resources in ways that, despite our present circumstances, will help us to serve God and others when we are called to do so. How are we focusing our time, energy, and resources in ways, despite our present circumstances, and despite our political affiliations, to help us work together in the struggles of the day? as it relates to drug addiction, mental health, health insurance, immigration, anti-racism work, climate change, and personal and social issues? Are we giving ourselves rest and care so that we have the energy to care for others? Are we continuing to develop and grow spiritually so that we are ready to do the work when the opportunity arises? And how are we helping others store up and prepare as they need to? How can we wait together well? And how do we wait well together regardless of who is our president? We still know that we must work together, prepare together, be the church together in wise and in foolish times. Even the wise bridesmaids fell asleep, and we all lose focus and wander at times or grow complacent or simply too weary. These things do not render us faithless so long as we remember what is most important and are prepared to offer it when the time comes. So spirit of liberation, you have called us to be witnesses to your compassion, to be witnesses to your justice. Yet we grow impatient and discouraged because so little seems to change 
and our efforts feel inconsequential. Help us maintain some semblance of joy, enthusiasm, and commitment required so that we might always be ready to reflect your love when the opportunity comes our way. May it be so. Amen. For this ministry moment this morning, I just want to share with you the importance of a congregational annual meeting. Yeah, I know that they can sometimes be not very exciting or fun, and that, yeah, yeah, we go through the same stuff over and over again, and yet, they are so important. They're so important to hear about the ministry that's taking place within the, our local church. It's important to hear about where our money is going towards, so how we do the budgeting. It's important to know what our staff is doing and how we can continue to equip staff to make them the best leaders possible to continue to do the work, and then how we as members of congregation can be equipped to do the work that God calls us to do. Yes, we need to wait in this season, and I miss you terribly. And yet, I do invite you to tune in to our virtual annual meeting today, to want to connect with one another, and two, to know that the church is continuing on. That even though we are not meeting in this space, the church is moving forward. The work is still being done. God continues to call us, even in this virtual way, to do God's work. So on this morning after worship, I invite you to click on that Zoom link. Even if you've never been on Zoom before, it'll be okay. You just click on it, and I'll make sure that you're muted so that in case you say something you're not supposed to say, I'll, I've got you covered. And it'll be a good way for us just to see one another. And then when you want to speak, just raise your hand and I'll unmute you. I know it sounds funny and kitsch, but it's the way in which we can connect in this time. And please know that we have all been there. We've all in, in had, to, had to have the opportunity of being on our first Zoom meeting. And if this is your first Zoom meeting, know that you are among friends. So on this day, my friends, I thank you for the work that you do in your spaces to hold on to hope in this season of waiting and to know that God's light and love continue to shine upon all of us as we do God's ministry together. Let's take a moment to pray. Today, more than most, we ask you to hear our prayer of dedication. We ded dedicate ourselves again to you. We are ready to be your presence and to be your people. Receive our worship and our promises as evidence of our commitments and love. And bless them all, we pray. Amen. I invite us now into a time of prayer, a time in which we can gather as God's people to pray together and to share in those prayers. And if you have prayers that you'd like to lift up, I invite you to post them in the comments section below or to text me and I can share those uh, prayer requests either later today or um, after um, various daily connections to know that we are all in this together. And believe it or not, there are other things going on in our world other than an election and other than COVID. And that is to say that yes, let us continue to pray for our leaders, let us continue to pray for whomever our president is, and let us continue to pray for those who have been affected by COVID and the many lives lost. I also would like to lift up those, though, who continue to grieve, who grieve the loss of loved ones. In this past week, I lost a dear friend of mine, so prayers to Catherine's family as they deal with her loss. And I pray for all of you who are heading into this holiday season as we're looking towards Thanksgiving and Christmas for those who grieve for the death of loved ones and friends and how that loss is felt 
in these times. I also lift up prayers for those who are affected by Tropical Storm Etta and for the terror attack that took place in Vienna. There is so much going on in our world, so much going on in this season of waiting, that we take this moment to pause and to pray and to come to you, loving God. Gracious God, we are a people who have often taken our faith for granted. We have allowed ourselves to become distracted by the constant light show that is human life on this planet in this age. And yet we gather desiring to be your people in truth and honesty. Although we are surrounded by the glittering masterworks of technology and entertainment, we sometimes struggle to find your light. We long for clarity of life in your love, but the temptations of our culture can consume us. Help us to be ready and to be renewed when we fall short. Fill us with your joy, humility, justice, grace, and mercy. Help us to be replenished by your forgiving love and teach us to renew others as we go. Renew your planet, we pray. Teach us to walk gently upon it as readiness in your reign. Renew your communities, we pray. Teach us to work with, to work and live in harmony and justice as readiness in your reign. Renew your children, we pray. Teach us to find deep purpose and satisfaction in worshiping you as readiness in your reign. Renew your leaders, we pray. Guide them to be led by compassion and wisdom and help us to support them in their endeavors toward the common good as readiness in your reign. Renew your presence among us. Help us to discern your light even in the brightness of the lights of this world as readiness in your reign. And receive us into holy communion with you united in the glorious fruition of love imagined, designed, and embodied by the one who calls us by name, embodied by Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray, our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now turn to our final hymn, and thanks again to Beth for singing today.
Why must we wait so long, loving God? It hurts. And yet we know through this season of waiting that you journey with us. The moments of great wisdom and the moments when we are incredibly foolish. We know that you journey with us. And so on this day, may God bless you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God look upon you with light in this season of waiting and know that you are not alone through it all. God's light and love be with you on this day. And let the people say, Amen.